So here's what I want us to notice now. Okay. I know you can't do this to your diagram. In fact, I don't want you to do it to your diagram. But I'm now going to get rid of the triangles. The triangles are just there to help us get the coordinates. Watch carefully. Once you get these triangles out of the way, Holy That'll God. do. I don't Holy need those either. <clears throat> I want you to remember. What did I do to turn <laughs> this guy over here into this guy over here? What transformation did I apply, right? Rotation. I rotated by 90 degrees because I was trying to work out perpendicular stuff, right? So now what I've got, and you can add this in. Now what I've got is, let's go purple. I've got two lines that are perpendicular to each other. They meet at right angles, right there. Now remember you told me, parallel lines, they have the same gradient, identical. One is two, the other is two. Well here, clearly these gradients are related, but they're not the same, obviously, they're not parallel. So how are we gonna work it out? Underneath where you've drawn this diagram, we're gonna work out each of these gradients. We're gonna work out the gradient of OA, that's the original interval, and then we're going to work out the gradient of OB. That's the one we got by rotation. Okay. Now remember, it's just rise over run. Rise over run. This one's easy, the first one. For OA, what's the rise? You have the triangle still there. It's Q, isn't it? Isn't it Q? It's Q. Uh, if I were to be really precise, it's actually Q take away zero because rise is uh, what's what is rise? It's y two, sorry, y two minus y one, right? Yeah. What about the denominator? What's the run? P. It's P, which I get from P minus zero. Do you agree? So there's there's my gradient right there. Q minus P. Coming over back to the left hand side for O B, what is the rise? Huh. Now, the rise has to do with the y coordinate. So it has to be to do with this p here, right? But it's not going up, is it? It's going down, right? So you could either just say that's minus p, or where does that come from? It's, it's actually 0 minus p. Do you see why? Because I'm comparing it to the origin. The origin's coordinates are 0, 0. Do you agree? Okay. So that, that, that there, that's y2 minus y1. That's, that's the gradient formula. What's on the denominator? Minus q. Zero. Zero minus q. I think it's 0 minus, now remember you told me, this guy's on the left hand side. So it's actually negative q. Are you okay with that? You see how I've lined it up? Rise over run? So when I simplify it, the numerator is negative p. What about the denominator? Q. It's positive Q. Okay, now have a look at these two. This gradient and this gradient. Clearly not the same. How would you describe these two? How would you describe them? Well, the lines are perpendicular. The lines are perpendicular. But the gradients are just numbers. Numbers can't be perpendicular to each other. Only, only shapes can be. So what's the relationship between these? I can see two differences. <coughs> Have a look. Um, you notice they're both fractions, right? One fraction is the other one upside down. Do you notice that? Uh, we have a name for that when you turn a fraction upside down. We call it the reciprocal. But they're not just reciprocals of each other, are they? There's another difference. What's the other difference? Not just that you turn it upside down. There's a negative sign. Thank you. So these are negative reciprocals of each other okay when lines are parallel their gradients are equal when lines are perpendicular their gradients are not equal their gradients are negative reciprocals um, you remember how I I imagine these are P and Q they could be anywhere but we said before um, it looks like the gradient of this guy is 2 what does it look like the gradient of this is just look at it. What does it look like? It's going to be negative. It's not negative 2, but... Isn't it going to be negative 2 over 4? 
do you see? Look, the rise is going down. There's the negative 2. And the run is 4. Negative 2 over 4. Which, of course, is minus 1 over 2. Minus 1 over 2 versus 2. Do you see how they're negative reciprocals of each other? Okay. So, let me recap. Parallel lines, equal gradients. Perpendicular lines, negative reciprocal gradients. There's one way that you might find it a little bit easier to say, because negative reciprocal, bit of a mouthful. I'm going to say it down the bottom here, and I'd love you to have it underneath. If OA is perpendicular to OB, if the two lines meet at right angles, then when you take those gradients, the first gradient and the second gradient, what happens when you multiply them? Have a look at the two numbers. This guy and this guy, what happens when you multiply them together? Well, the Q's cancel out with each other, right? You notice the Q on the top and the bottom? And then the P's also cancel out because there's one on the top and the bottom. The only thing that gets left behind is that minus sign, right? So in fact, you get negative 1. Do you remember the example I just did? 2 times negative a half. If you multiply those together, sure enough, you get negative 1, don't you? Okay, does that make sense? 